Time for a drink before the show. I'm pushing my way to the bar against a flow of leather jackets and band t-shirts, descending upon me a cascading river of punks or whatever we're called now. We are young and mostly white, unpolished stones. Outsider boys with anger issues and too much heat to contain. All of us fully prepared to lose our shit at the Iggy Pop show. <laughs> I climb the stairs to the bar like a salmon against the current, cutting through the crush of bodies heading to the floor because I want a drink in 1987. I have lost the people who brought me here, and this drift of unfamiliar faces is a comfort. I've become a stranger when you stop me on the stairs, offering your drink, smiling, do you want my beer? They won't let me take it on the floor. But I hesitate, puzzled by my good fortune and your easy laugh. It's OK, you say. I don't have AIDS, as you hand me the beer. You laugh harder at your joke because I don't. It's supposed to be funny, and I get it. You're not a fag. And the punchline is, you think I'm just like you. I'm walking to work in the Castro, black dress pants, a white shirt, a thin black tie folded neatly in my bag, my busboy uniform. They're the nicest clothes I own. They need to stay clean, so I carry them to work. I need this job. I can't go back to living in a car, and I won't go home to another Thanksgiving like the last. My uncle moralizing about God's punishment of the homosexuals, a plague of biblical proportions. I told my mom I was done with family holidays, moving to San Francisco. I walk fast in 1989. There's been another string of beatings and everyone's on edge. He's a producer, he tells me, while I clear the dishes from his table. But I know who he is. One of the waiters got a part in the porn he's making, and he wants me to come along for the ride. It's your buddy's first shoot. He feels safer with you there, the producer explains, touching his bread knife to the back of my hand. So what do you say? Maybe we could cast you too. If your cock's big enough and your camera ready, maybe we can put a mask over that face of yours. I turn red at work, unable to speak. Come on, it's a joke. You're gonna need a sense of humor if you wanna be in this business. Other diners are shifting in their seats, averting their eyes. Listen, I know you have your doubts, but it's perfectly safe. Get yourself tested and give me a call. He hands me his card. But I don't call. I take a job in North Beach pouring coffee for burned out poets. I tell myself, I tell myself I need to be around more aspiring writers and less aspiring actors. <laughs> but the truth is, I'm scared. And in 1980, 1992, I run. I run from the, the place that I feel most at home and the most at risk. I run from the constant reminders of the dead and the dying, yeah. from the sick, and their caretakers, their lovers, partners, and families. I can't watch this community die. I tell myself, it's not mine to lose. The sun is a weight pressing me into Highway 1 as I walk to the nearest gas station that sells booze. This is country living, a stone's throw from the end. It takes all my strength not to walk into the forest that surrounds me on all sides, never to return. There is no year, there is no time. Only the shakes coming like blows, hard, in flurries. I walk not to fall. I came to the country to dry out my only impossible job the one I will fail. The gas station looks abandoned, 
a cinder block bunker behind a lonely pump on a slab of concrete. There is one man in the store behind the register smoking, sizing me up as I wander the lone aisle. I know him, but he doesn't know me. I used to buy candy from his mother when I was three feet tall and the store was just a shack down the road. We all heard about the son who came back, burned down the shack and his mother in it. They even sent him to prison for a while, but now he was returned. We used to call his mom the good witch, but he turned out bad, like me. He puts a fifth of vodka and a pack of Luckies in the bag, grinning, trying to, make, trying to make eye contact. Can I show you something funny, he says. You'll love this. And he lays a greeting card down on the counter in front of me. A cartoon bouquet of red roses, our deepest condolences printed in elaborate script. Go ahead, open it. But when I do, I gasp. Because now you have AIDS is scrawled across the inside, covered in dried blood and cum, a tawny mess of crimson swimming in a spent condom, bloody fingerprints and smudge marks from hastily scotch taping wet rubber to paper. And I almost vomit at the sight and the smell. His laughter is close, like being spit on. Ah, oh, come on, it's just a joke. You should have seen your face, he says, as I stumble backwards out the door, across Highway 1, and backwards still into the woods.